There may be a set of muscles in your body that you don't utilize that if you did would transform your golf swing. Today I'm with Dr. Tyler Stanford. He's a professor of biomechanics at Utah Valley University. You've done a lot of work with force plates and granted your action forces. And here's something I see all the time as we give lessons. You see somebody coming in impact and you see the body kind of going like this where you do this early hip extension thing, right? Yeah, okay. Now what I feel right here, Tyler, is I feel my quad like really engaging and, and giving me a lot of ground force, but there's probably a better way. Right? Yeah, for sure, and, and you bring up this idea, I always think about the idea of what's the force that has to be created to cause the motion, right? That's gonna come from the way we utilize the ground, the muscles that were being activated, yeah. right? And again, we're, we're a people that are used to utilizing our quads a lot in motion, right? It, it's something we use a lot to stand up. We use it to walk. We, we do that a lot in terms of movement. Um, and what you just described right there is this idea that my goal with these forces that are pointing towards the ball away from the ball is as I'm coming down in here to impact, I want that net force or the overall force from my two feet to be pointed away from my target. Because if it's not pointed away from my target, I get exactly what you said, where everything just kind of throws and thrusts into the ball. And again, we can have this argument of, well, there were maybe great players who early extended, and it's like, well, maybe to a small extent and things. We don't need to get in that debate. I think most amateur golfers are doing this in a way that's inhibiting their ability to play good golf. And it's because there's too much force going up and towards the ball and not enough force going away. And you described a really good thing, which is, I'm used to straightening my leg with my quads, and if that's the only thing I'm straightening with, I'm going to tend to stay a little bit too much on the balls of my feet and end up kind of getting that, as opposed to letting that force run through the ball and then actually start to kind of pass back a little bit and actually come through my midfoot all the way to the back of the foot. Yeah, so why does this matter so much, right? So if, if I feel on this lead leg, and so many people, I've struggled with this in the past, almost everybody we give lessons to, struggles with. if I feel this force here, th okay, I'm coming like this, my shoulders come up, and now to hit the ball, I have to lift, yeah. right? I have to aggressively lengthen the club with my right wrist, and that destroys your path and face angle control. Yeah. And track man numbers show definitively, you've got a really, really small margin to have good ball flight of your, with your club path and club base. And I see it all the time, hundreds and hundreds of times. People that are doing this motion, swing one, swing two, 10 degrees variance on the, on the club base sure. because the wrist has to go like this because you're extending like this. Okay, so quads are in the golf swing, but I've forgotten a whole nother group. How do I get more force going this way. What muscle am I not using? Yeah, so I really think a lot about the importance of the glutes in this. So we can think glute men, glute me, glute max, right? These are these muscles that are kind of on the side and then wrap around to the back. And they're muscles that are really important for lateral stability. They're really important for this nice rotation. And, and this is kind of a cool principle I teach my students all the time, which is this idea, of if I want to straighten my knee, well, there are two ways I can straighten my knee, right? One is via the quads actually pulling my tibia forward. That will definitely straighten my knee. Okay. But another way I can do it is actually by utilizing these muscles to actually kind of pull my femur back or my thigh bone back. And that's where the glutes can really come in, right? As we come into this position, instead of just kind of thrusting to the front of that foot, when we start engaging these glutes in a way that kind of allows us to kind of pull some things backwards, get that hip, get that pelvis moving away from the target, that can be a much more effective way to straighten the leg. It can be a much more effective way if you've heard of the idea of posting up on, on the ground, right? It just helps you engage the right muscles so that instead of this, we're getting into this position, maintaining some spine angles, and kind of can keep our hands through impact. Yeah. So if I, if I look at a down-the-line video of almost any tour-level player, if we, drew, if we drew a line of the... Of the depth of the pelvis, right, at setup. At impact, that left butt cheek is going to be at or even deeper uh -huh. than where it was at setup. And almost every amateur, <laughs> almost every amateur is going here. So as I feel quad propelling me this way and glutes are propelling me this way, it's like when you post, don't 
try to maximize this and forget the backside muscles. Right? Yeah. If you got it, you got to feel. Uh, yeah, was it was. I forget what year this was. All the years when uh, Tiger came off the course, right? I was talking about glute spire. And, yes. And I remember at the time, again, that was before I'd gotten into a lot of golf research, and I'm like, hey, whatever. Tiger said if people are going to believe it, right? But now that I've really kind of dove into the way that golfers utilize their body, how important these forces are to create the proper motion. Like I start thinking, like, yeah, no shock there. Like he really did understood this idea that. To do that, we really have to learn how to fire these glutes. We really have to learn to activate these muscles and be comfortable engaging them in ways that help us promote that proper motion of the downswing. Okay, so as you look at a, um, let's, let's do a, a little bit of a face on here. All right, so as I look at a, uh, a good golf swing here, it's very easy to see the head. People obviously keep your head down, right? And if I just use my quad here, what's happening? Look at my head, right? It comes up, right? If I use the glutes, it's, it's much more level, right? Now the other thing that's pretty, um, pretty significant is look how my spine tilt changes as I do this motion, as opposed to that motion. I mean, so keep your head down. It's really an artifact of your lead leg engaging muscles on your backside as opposed to the district quad. Now anatomically, um, when you really fire your, your uh, quads here, what does that do in terms of pelvis rotation? Yeah, again, when we think of the way the quads muscles actually run, their muscle fibers are actually running straight up and down, which, which means number one, you activate those muscles, you're not going to get anything except for straight extension, right? When you look at the muscle fibers of the glutes, right, they tend to start to run in more of these horizontal patterns that can promote the type of motion you want in the femur, but that also have a fiber orientation to create rotation. The other hard thing that tends to happen too is when these start to fire and we kind of lock out our pelvis, it actually makes it really a lot more difficult to actually create some of those rotations as well. And I'm not saying that your quads aren't going to produce some force in that motion. For sure they are. But if we look at it, maybe separated as primary, secondary, engaging these muscles that have more of this horizontal and oblique type fiber orientations is going to promote the rotation with the extension or with that straight, straightening and help you get the position that we've kind of talked about. So just the way my glute muscles are connected between my pelvis and my femur facilitate ro a, a rotation dynamic. My quad isn't, I mean, you think of running and propelling yourself forward, it's like much more stable, yeah. right? So this is uh, what, how you can become a, a better golfer is feeling this as a secondary yeah. uh, you know, force of catching and, and rotating. Try to feel primarily on your backside. I mean, this is obviously, I mean, it's so easy for us because all day long we're using yeah. our quads. To, we don't have to train our quads, yeah. right? All day long, we're not doing a bunch of rotational yep. things. And, and so I, I, as we give our lessons, um, and we'll put some, we'll put like a chair or a alignment stick or something here. It's like you have to push through that. What you quickly feel is, hey, I've got to engage a set of muscles back here as opposed to these guys up here to be able to get the, the proper rotation. Yeah, and I've spent a lot of time, you know, before I did golf research, I did a lot of walking and running research. and. And we're constantly trying to help people move differently, right? Which is cool that there's a carryover, right? It's really what biomechanics is. It's what I study. It's how people move and how can I alter those movements to make them more efficient, less injury prone, better performers, whether that's walking, running, or hitting a golf ball. And I think there's kind of two sides to that coin. So Dwayne just des described one of them, which is I have the capacity to do it. I just don't know how. And so that's where you can do some really great drills. I think, you know, Dwayne described a few right there to get the feel of it. Another one is like, maybe I don't have the capacity. And so that's where I maybe need to look at the ability of like, well, okay, maybe I need to start doing some things that are engaging the glutes, right? So there's nothing more frustrating than kind of beating your head against the wall where it's like, engage those glutes, engage those glutes, and your glutes have no capacity to engage. And this is where... I think when we look at the things we're maybe doing in our off-season training, trying to really strengthen and, and do act activities and exercises that will help us enhance that ability is going to then get that matchup where we can do the things we want to do. Now, as you look at a lot of gym protocols in terms of core 
um, core strengthening routines, Pilates routines, for example. We do a lot of, okay, now we're gonna you know, get your glutes engaged, you're gonna feel those glutes. That's a really, really good thing yep. uh, to do from a, from a golfing yep. perspective. For sure. Right? For sure. Because uh, getting more of the load bearing with, this, with those muscle groups, both as in terms of how you support the turn to the right and the turn to the left, is going to uh, give you ability to maintain a more fluid swing that maintains your spine tilt, and that has implications on just how easy it is to maintain the path and pace control. Yeah. Exactly.